ever heard that quote, that life is 10% of what happened to you and 90% of how you respond to it? Well, it took me a lot of time to realize that quote until I heard this story, so let me tell you about it. It's a story of a 46-year-old woman called Deneo who lived next to my own with her two children and her dad. Now, if you looked at Deneo from the outside, she looked like a perfectly lucky and happy woman. She had a farm that was 10 times bigger than the farmers of that site, she received several loans from the government, and she had a pretty stable financial situation compared to the farmers there. But if you look a little bit closer into Deneo's life, you realize that she's actually a deeply sad person. Well, if you would have been there, and you would have asked Deneo why she was feeling so sad, she would have probably answered you that it's because of her husband that left her a few years ago, or it's because of her financial situation that she was actually not very proud of. But the truth is, the real reason why Daniel was feeling so sad is because of nothing but her thought. I know, it looks a little bit exaggerated, but let me walk you through the thought of Daniel in one day. First thing first, she wakes up at 6.30 in the morning, and the first thing she thinks is, oh, this alarm is so childish, I want to go back to sleep. Then she goes to prepare the breakfast for her family, and she thinks, why can't I prepare a decent breakfast for my family? I only have corn and some rice. Then she goes to check the crops in her land, and she thinks, why did the sky not rain last season? No, I don't have enough crops to grow. She keeps going about her day, thinking, why is this? Why is that? She didn't understand why the world was so against her, but she also didn't understand why her friends in Gaborone had a much better life with a job that didn't require as much effort. But most importantly, what Deneo really didn't understand was her dad. See, Deneo's dad was that kind of person who looked really boring and simple from the outside. He was 73 years old, his wife died about 10 years before, and before he stopped working, he had a really small farm, just enough for him to provide food for his family. But if you look a little bit closer into her dad's life, you'll realize that he's actually a deeply happy person. In fact, he spent most of his time just dancing and singing over song, and all the simplest things made him so happy. The name on her side never understood her dad. She was always thinking, what in the world can make that man happy? Anyways, Dineo and her dad kept going about their life, as usual, until one day, Dineo noticed that her dad was missing on the breakfast table. When she went to check on him, she saw him laying on his bed, still. He was too calm, and she knew something was wrong. She started shaking his shoulder and screaming his name, but he didn't respond. He was gone. Deneo felt so sad at that moment. She laid on his chest and cried for hours. You know how it's only when you do something that you realize it's important? Well, Deneo at that time realized that she missed out on trying to understand her dad. There were so many things she could have learned from this unique personality. Well, while she was crying, she noticed the diary of her dad next to his pillow, and she decided to read it for the first time. While she was flipping through the pages, she realized that her dad was journaling about things like how the wind was blowing in his face and it made him happy, or how he was excited to see how the crops were growing more and more every day. He was journaling about all the simple and random stuff. And at that moment, Daniel felt like she found the key of happiness for her. She decided she was going to start embracing her dad's spirit by looking at simplicity in all the different things in her life. She also realized that it's a quality not only in her father, but in a lot of people in Botswana who value simplicity over anything else. The next morning, when the new woke up, she decided to enjoy her alarm and start dancing with it. And then, when she went to prepare her breakfast, she was grateful for the corn and rice she had, as it was better than nothing. Then when she went to check on her crops, she gave a name to each one of her crops, because she loved them that much. You see, the events in Daniel's life didn't really change. She was in the same farm, having the same job, and the same morning routine. But what really changed was her perspective towards all of those things. That night, when Daniel came back to her house, she laid on her bed and took her dad's diary. And then she wrote, what really governs her happiness is not what she sees, but from which angle she looks at.